but you guys are begging me to ruin your day. and welcome back to my channel my name is Gita Marie and I recently because I have been lacking a little bit of inspiration for videos which is really dumb because I have a whole ass list of things that I want to record but these two can apparently happen at the same time but in order to combat this I asked you guys on Instagram and here on YouTube what kind of video you would want for today and the majority have spoken we're gonna talk about things that we usually think are sustainable that really turns out not to be very sustainable and you know I want to do more live toned bright hope core content but you guys are begging me to ruin your day no but I recently got a comment from someone saying I feel really good about my sustainability efforts and then I go and watch a video and I feel really discouraged I am so sorry that is not the point I don't want to make anyone feel discouraged I don't want to ruin anyone's day really what I seek to do when I am such a big bummer is that I want to encourage that we use our energy in the most effective way so our climate action is not just something that makes us feel good but it's actually also something that's effective in terms of lowering carbon emissions these things sort of have to exist at the same time it's great if you feel good about it but it also has to work but I'm gonna ruin your day now this has been a pet peeve of mine for ages and it's carbon offsetting programs and tree planting operations the whole idea and this is a mentality thing more than anything else but the whole idea that we can carbon offset something is deeply flawed we're not so much buying the actual offsetting as we are buying the promise of an offsetting if we look at tree planting operations it can take 10 15 20 25 years and more for a tree to grow to a certain size where it will actually have an actual CO2 impact. And typically you either get a tree planted for free with every purchase or you pay three or four quid to have this tree planted and that's even like in the higher end of tree planting donations. Do we think, do we think that three quid will be able to fund decades of forage management? No. I have a whole entire video on tree planting and carbon offsetting that go into a little bit more detail with this but just let it be known the idea that we can do something that's polluting over here and somehow make up for it by buying a product over here doesn't make sense the carbon offsetting is at this point a product that you can buy and that companies are profiting off of from a corporate perspective what we are really supporting is the outsourcing of sustainability which also doesn't work we are praising at least encouraging companies to not change their own business models to be more sustainable and to emit less and pollute less but simply encourage them to outsource the sustainability initiatives elsewhere which is easy and also doesn't work really i don't want to see carbon offsetting and tree planting programs as part of a company's or a business's environmental sustainability identity because it's not something that they do they pay other people to do something that potentially down the line could result in CO2 reduction maybe. So if that is the only thing a company is doing for sustainability, it's tough out there. <laughs> and this is where it gets tricky because planting trees and engaging in natural conservation programs is a really good thing. My big problem with this kind of marketing of it is when we are promised more than it is able to provide. So if a company, a completely made up, not at all local airport started engaging in a natural conservation program in my local community stated that they're doing so simply because we need more nature in this area and we would like to spend some of our profits to help that become a reality fantastic however when you promote it and you use it in advertising to say that you are now co2 neutral that you are now carbon neutral, that you are now carbon offsetting with this tree planting, that's where we have a problem. It's a great thing, it just doesn't take away from the impact of your primary product. So support and engage with tree planting operations and natural restoration all you want, just don't sell it to consumers as you working towards carbon neutrality because that's not what's happening. I have a feeling I'm going to piss off some people now, but um, tote bags, 
yeah, so the thing is, we're using plastic in really dumb ways, right? We're, plastic is not a bad material, but we're using it in insane ways, where we're producing single-use plastic and we don't really have the proper infrastructure to recycle it. And even when we do recycle it, the recycling rate is pretty low, 9-11% on average globally, and we have to add new plastic to recycle plastic in order to uphold the quality. As such, we should be phasing out single-use plastic in many, many, many instances, at least not everywhere, but plastic bags surely and one of the alternatives that has been around for a while are tote bags cotton tote bags which is a great alternative unless you overconsume them and it is incredibly easy to overconsume tote bags i would go as far as to say that every single person who owns more than one tote bag is over consuming tote bags and i don't necessarily think it's the intention to over consume but that's what happens because cotton is an extremely resource intensive material to produce. It requires vast amounts of water and it's also one of the non-food crops that require the majority of pesticides and insecticides. Cotton takes a massive toll on the environment. So when we use it, I'm going to say stupidly, I don't want to say stupid. When we buy a cotton toad or when we receive a cotton toad, which is more often than not how it goes, right? Where there's even just a smidge of commercial interest, you will get a tote bag, a promotional freebie. And these have a much higher carbon footprint than a plastic bag, which doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't be using tote bags, that we should be using plastic bags. It just means that you have to use your cotton tote bag hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times before it actually has a lower carbon footprint than using a plastic bag. However, I cannot say this without also saying that the, the problems with cotton and the problems with plastic do not necessarily overlap one-to-one. -one. With plastic bags, you have lack of recycling, you have microplastic. This is not something we see with cotton totes. But if we look solely at carbon emissions, it's not necessarily a good idea to buy more cotton totes. I would go as far as to say that we have the cotton totes in the world that we need now, and we don't need more. I will not need to purchase or receive any more cotton totes as long as I live. The way that we use it actually determines its sustainability. We have a production impact and a disposal impact, but the use phase, the consumer impact of how we use products is actually a really determinative factor. What we do with it, how long we use it for, if we repair it when it breaks, determines the impact overall, determines how sustainable or unsustainable something is. A cotton tote bag isn't inherently sustainable. It's only sustainable if you use it in a sustainable way. We can't just slab a sustainable label on a tote bag and call it a day. We can't sell tote bags as a sustainable product. There is absolutely nothing sustainable about the supply chain of cotton, but how we use it can make it sustainable. I might get in trouble for mentioning this, but only if you don't watch the whole thing. Stay with me. Okay, so electric vehicles can be a good solution if we are solely looking at reducing emissions from individual cars private cars. However, the energy in the energy grid plays a significant role in how sustainable electric cars are. Although it is proven that in most cases, even if the power grid contains fossil fuel derived power, the EV still has a lower carbon footprint. But to scale this development, it's absolutely vital that the sources of power are increasingly renewable, along with the increasing popularity of EVs. And you can easily look up how much renewable energy is in your power grid. In Denmark, I think it's 58 or 68% renewable energy in our power grid. So I would recommend looking this up. Then I know there is some confusion as to whether or not it's more sustainable to buy a new car, an EV, or to keep driving the car you already have until that breaks down and you can't use it anymore. There are some LCA reports out there that conclude that it is actually better for the environment if you buy an EV. However, and then there is all the nuance and annoying complexity, once again, we have to look at the consumer phase and how we use these products as well. Because what tends to happen when consumers buy an electric vehicle is that they move up. They buy a car that's bigger than the car they had before, and now they drive more as well. And if the power in the power grid is not renewable, driving, producing, using bigger cars has a bigger impact than using smaller cars, typically. So when looking at the use phase, what kind of car we choose and how much we 
use it, that plays a major role as well. And I think electric vehicles has a really important place in terms of reducing emissions from the transportation sector, because individual cars account for the majority of emissions from the transportation sector. But I think there's something we are overlooking here as well. It feels symptomatic. It would make so much more sense to focus a lot of this energy that we're using on EVs currently and putting it into optimizing collective traffic, train systems, tram systems. Overall, there is a massive problem also with asphalt, with roads, how our global infrastructure tends to favor individual cars. Do acknowledge that it's easier to make a transition into not having a car at all and using public transportation in urban areas. And I don't want to be the big bummer that keeps talking about lithium batteries. It is still a problem though. I have an entire video about electric vehicles, so if you want more detail and nuance, head over there. We also talk more about lithium batteries in that video. And I think for now, what is important is that I'm not discouraging anyone from getting an EV, but I think it would be better for us to reflect upon whether or not we need a car at all and reflect upon if we are scaling up the cars that we are buying because they're now climate friendly, which means that we can drive more, buy bigger cars, etc. because that's not really how it works. Now, I also have a problem with plant-based compostable plastic. This is a solution that feels like popping a piece of duct tape on a broken pipe. Because the whole idea that we need to reinvent new materials that we can use for single-use purposes, when in fact circular systems would really be the way to go. With the leg unequivocally. The thing is with compostable and plant-based plastic is that they're often advertised as being home compostable or the way that they're compostable is not necessarily really disclosed, which means that consumers just assume it breaks down in nature. That is not an unheard of association. You hear compostable, you think, oh, we dig it down into the dirt and then it just goes away. It's not quite what happens. In order to compost a lot of this plant-based plastic, you will have to use industrial compost facilities where you degrade organic material in really high temperatures. The infrastructure is simply not readily available. And the thing that we did is that we launched an alternative plastic, an alternative to petrochemical plastic that was compostable and made from plants, but we didn't make the infrastructure to properly recycle it available, which means that it most often than not ends in landfill where it, in fact, does not biodegrade. The infrastructure to actually treat these materials in the way that they should be does not exist for the vast majority of consumers. In so many cases, a compostable plant-based plastic alternative is greenwashing. Hold up. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We are clinging on to the idea of single-use plastics when in fact we really just should be moving on. That is where we should focus our carbon reduction efforts. That is where they would be the most effective. One of the other options when I asked you guys what kind of video that you wanted today was a video about food saving apps and how they are not sustainable. And uh, ah, guess what? We're gonna talk about it now. I've thought about this for a while and I recently saw someone on TikTok talk about it as well. And I thought, this is exactly what I've been thinking too. I think we have to talk about it. And I want to do a broader video where we only focus on this. So this is just the gist of it. When we talk about anti-food waste measures, food saving measures. We're not talking about solving a climate related problem or an environmental problem. We are talking about solving a moral problem because the food that is wasted is a result of overproduction, which means that if we want to be more sustainable in terms of food waste, we need to limit overproduction. A lot of food saving apps and food like discounted food saving anti-food waste initiatives are doing is that they're attacking the problem at the very very end of the supply chain. Of course food shouldn't be wasted and that feels bad and that shouldn't happen and that is a waste of resources but the resources have been wasted which means that this is also related to our morality and our feeling of justice and the fact that we feel really icky about throwing food away. Sustainability is at the very opposite end of the supply chain. I want to illustrate this as simply as possible. If we have a baker and a baker produces 10 pieces of bread, he sells five, but he sells them at a price where he actually covers all of his expenses. So he doesn't really need to sell the remaining five. So usually just throws them away and he still makes a profit. Then an initiative shows up and says, you can actually sell your remaining five pieces of bread at a discounted rate. Then he earns a little bit extra money. That does not drive an incentive to reduce the amount of food that he's producing. So he continues to produce 10 pieces of bread, even though he knows he will only actually sell five and then he will make a little bit of an extra profit on the remaining pieces. If we're looking at sustainability, 
it would make so much more sense to attack this problem at the root, at the overproduction, at the manufacturers that are producing more and not caring about the impact of the resources that go into producing this food. This is not to say that any food waste saving measures aren't doing anything good. There are massive social benefits to it, donating to charity, to people that don't have the funds to feed themselves, homeless people, all, all this is good. But if we're looking at the marketing of these initiatives, it's very often promoted as a sustainable initiative. And that it isn't. Just needed to get this off my chest and I think we should talk about this some more. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below because I would love to expand on this further and uh, yeah let me know what you think and if you're sitting there and thinking how dare she say that EVs are not sustainable and they have a carbon reduction impact blah, blah, blah. I think it's important that we as individuals are aware that sustainability and environmental impact and climate action are incredibly complex and nuanced and often they are communicated to us in a very simplified way from people that economically benefit from us understanding them in a simple way. So this doesn't mean that these things can't ever be sustainable, it just means that how we use these things and what context they exist in is what determines their sustainability. Let me know if you have any other examples of things that are often promoted as sustainable that might not be and let me know if you want a part two. Thank you so much for watching this video, have an amazing day and I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves, until then. Bye.